Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking the steel MS-170 and turning it into a detail chainsaw carving saw. It's really simple guys. You guys spend a little bit of money, take a little time, and you guys can do this. It's a simple job. So what we're going to end up doing is putting a dime tip bar on this MS-170. We're going to change out the sprocket in the chain, and honestly, it'll be ready to go. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, stick around, Let's get started. Hey guys, so let's say you want to get into chainsaw carving. You bought an MS-170. You've been carving with this and you're like, you know, I want to be able to get more detail, but I don't want to have to buy a whole nother saw. That's all right. You can start with this MS-170. You can turn it into a detail saw. You can swap it back and forth, kind of do whatever you want, especially if you're getting started. Investing in multiple saws can be a large investment. This cheap saw in the scheme of things can do multiple jobs for you so when you get the saw it comes with a 3 8 pitch chain and bar all right usually a 16 inch bar you get 43 gauge chain on it that's usually what it comes on it comes on the saw so in order to put a detail bar on it or a dime tip bar you have to swap out your sprocket now what i end up doing is i go right over to the dealer my steel dealer wherever i bought the saw at, and i say hey i need a quarter pitch sprocket now, for you guys, if you're not sure which sprocket that is, I'm gonna gonna let you know right now. The numbers on the sprocket are one one two three slash seven seven. Then it says one slash four for quarter pitch, in Z eight because I believe it has eight teeth. Let's see, two, four, six. Yeah, it's got eight teeth, and this is a steel uh, replacement sprocket right here. Okay. So boom, got my sprocket. Now, while you're at the dealer and you're getting your sprocket, you could also order yourself up a dime tip bar and you let them know what you want. So steel offers bars in 12 inch. They don't do shorter, they don't do longer as far as the detail bar goes. It's just a 12 inch carving bar, but you can get it in either 43 gauge chain or 50 gauge. 50 gauge chain is wider, has a wider cut or a wider kerf, where 43 gauge chain is a much more narrow cut and kind of can do finer work with smaller carvings and things like that. I normally prefer using 43 gauge chain, so I get the 43 gauge bar for my detail work. Now today though, I'm going to be putting on this Canon bar. This is a 12 inch bar and it runs 50 gauge chain. I bought this when I first started carving, had issues with that saw, took it all apart, whatever. Here we are today though, getting ready to put it on this saw. Now I've also got 50 gauge carving chain. Now I do recommend when you order up your sprocket, you order up your bar, I recommend ordering up two carving chains that fit that bar. A lot of times you'll go through a couple chains before the bar is kaput. So you might as well get those up front, at least get two if one breaks or you have a problem, you hit something, you can always pull that chain off, put the new one on, sharpen that one, fix it later you're able to keep going. So let's get into actually swapping this out. Tools you're gonna need, small flathead screwdriver and your scrunch, all right? Now, when you guys are looking at the saw, you gotta get in here, pop these nuts off on the side. Also, real quick, in the future, I think I'm going to be doing an upgrade video to the steel MS-170 or MS-180. It'll apply to either, but we'll be doing it, I believe, on a 170. Not 100% sure when that's going to happen. I'm waiting for some parts to come in, but I think it'll be fun, something to kind of play around. So once you've got your cover off, you can look in here, see if this will just pop off for you, which in this case it does. I'm going to set that aside. Let me bring you guys in close. So now we're looking at this sprocket down here, all right? This is the one that comes on the saw, at least came on mine. All right, Pico Z6, so this has six teeth. We're going to be replacing that with eight teeth. Now there is a little snap ring right here. This is where this little flathead comes into play. You got to put your screwdriver in, give it a little twist, and it pops off. So don't do what I just did. Try to keep your hand there and try to catch that so it hits your hand, hits the bench. Otherwise, that snap ring's gone and you got to go get another. Now, you could always just order one because I can't remember if it comes with your sprocket or not when you order it. I really don't remember. I've had this one kicking around for a while. But anyway, pull this washer off. <coughs> Reach in here and your sprocket should come off. Jeez, what's going on? It won't move, right? Come up here, grab your brake, pull it back, release sprocket comes off because remember your brake is what holds it in place 
don't click your brake on now. Don't play around with that. Just pull this off and you're good to go. Now grab your quarter pitch sprocket. And I want you to look at it very closely. There should be a line. See this line right here? You'll have to spin yours around until you find the line. It's a groove right here. If there's no groove, there should be a notch. See the notch? Okay, so there's a little notch out of that sprocket. Now, what you want to do is you want to look in here, in this little gap right here. Let me see if I can get you guys close enough so you can see. Now, the reason we're looking for the notch on the sprocket is because there's a little pin just inside. See how deep the screw? Inside here. You'll have to look. You'll find this little pin. It could be anywhere around the wheel here. Look for that pin. I lined up the pin with this opening right here. You guys can just see it in there. It's right there. See me move it very slightly. So I'm just going to line it so it's straight up and down. Now that pin is meant to line up with this notch. So then I go ahead, kind of eyeball it. Try to get this in here. It's a little tough holding the camera on trying to, boom. Lined up, okay? I was able to see it to go in. This is something you guys will have to see in person in order to, uh, more than likely in order to line up properly. Now, let's see. This, we line those pins up, this is back in. Now we wanna go ahead and take our, what looks like a washer, right? There's a side that's concaved. See how that dips in? That should be facing out. Put that on. And it's time for the snap ring. Hopefully you didn't lose yours. I almost did, but I saved it. Take your snap ring. Sometimes a bigger screwdriver works well. And you just got to pop it down in place. Which I got to move the whole saw to do it. But you got to pop that down in place, guys. Okay. Boom. Everything is on. That's it. This thing is get together and ready to go. So, up next. Right, we're going to take our bar, whether it's a cannon bar or a carving bar. I always say steel because steel is just what I normally run. I just happen to have this carving bar from Canon, which honestly is a great bar. There's really nothing wrong with it, guys. Just what ends up happening is I go to my dealer, I order other parts, and I'm like, oh, I'm already here. Just give me a bar. You know, so I just order a bar from them because I'm already there. I know some people do not like the steel bars, but I really haven't had an issue with steel brand bars. Um, I have found just through like, um, you know, my own little investigation that it really, I feel like it really depends on how you carve. Like I see a lot of people carve just wide open. If you're constantly running your bar wide open, you know, chances are you're going to, you're going to wear it out much, much quicker. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, obviously, there's better brands than others. You know, like to me, the steel bar is great. The Canon brand is great. And then there's some other brands that are a lot cheaper. Um, you know, but get whatever you can if you really want to get into this. Get what you can afford. And then later, upgrade. So I'm going to tighten this chain up just a little bit. Which the place to tighten the chain up, guys, is in the front of this saw. Kind of a pain in the neck. Make sure you line your teeth up here in the back on the chain, bottom side. Make sure your chain is on the right way. I know it sounds silly, but it happens. Now, something to keep in mind. The dime tip bar has no sprocket. This is a hard nose bar, dime tip bar. There is no sprocket in there. So this means there's nothing to guide the chain over the nose, which means it's going to create a lot more friction than a bar that has a sprocket. So in a minute, we're going to adjust that. But first, I want to just get this cover on. So it'll kind of hold everything together. And just take our bar nuts. And just kind of put them on. Not tight, tight, all right? Not even really going tight. Just going by hand here a little bit just to kind of keep it kind of loose, all right? So we can still make adjustments. Now, I want this chain to be loose. So, we need to loosen the bar back up a little and wiggle it. Push it back. Push the bar back as you loosen it. 
Now, how do I gauge my chain gap on a carving bar? I get myself a number two pencil, figure about center or where the, the chain is sagging the lowest, and slip my number two pencil in. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's a little bit loose for me. I'm actually gonna tighten that up just a click. Just a little, not much. All right, guys. So still fits in there. Could still go a little bit tighter, but roughly that, that's what you want. That's gonna help lessen the friction on the nose of the saw or on the nose of the bar. So from there, I hold the bar back in place and I tighten up. Sometimes, because you have to tighten forward, the bar will slide forward on you, tightening the chain up, which can be a pain. So it's a good idea, you know, wear gloves and stuff so you don't cut your hand on your chain here. But uh, tighten everything down. And that's it. Now you have a dime tip detail bar on your MS-170. And honestly, guys, save these parts. If you want to go back to a 3 8 you put this back on, you put that bar back on, you're good to go. You have a bigger bar for blocking. But if you want to save time, you can continue to just run quarter pitch. All right, so what does that mean? That means you can actually go out, get a quarter pitch bar that go, they only go up to 14 inches long with a 14 inch chain, quarter pitch chain to fit that bar. And you could just take this off and put the 14 inch on and use this saw for small carvings. It works, it's easy, it's a simple fix. You don't have to keep swapping your sprockets back and forth, all right? All right guys, so I went ahead and grabbed my other steel MS-170, okay? Here's the one we just did. Now it has a dime tip bar, quarter pitch. And here's another one that I've been carving with. This saw, I've already put a quarter pitch sprocket on it, but as you can see, this is not a dime tip bar. This is a roll nose. This is the 14 inch quarter pitch bar with 43 gauge chain. Now I will use this for small carvings, blocking, detail work, kind of like this one, but we're able to get down finer cuts with this saw. Again, I prefer to use 43 gauge chain. I'm only putting this one on for the, the sole fact of showing you guys. But when you come over here and you look at this, I could take this bar off now and put it on here and vice versa. So what that means for you guys, if you have one steel MS-170, you swap that sprocket out to a quarter pitch. And if you can, you order up your dime tip bar with two chains. And if they have it in stock, you pick yourself up a 14 inch bar, quarter pitch, 43 gauge in two chains. Now the bar number right now is 3005003409. That's the bar. So if you were to go and find that bar, um, they could help you get the chain or you can, you know what I mean? Look at the bar and you're able to match it up to the box on the chain. If you guys need more info on that, let me know and I'll make more of a detailed video on matching bars with chains and things like that when you're at the store, if you know, you're scared to ask for help. So again, it gives you a multi-purpose saw. So if you only have this 170 detail bar, take it off. You could put this bar right on without changing your sprocket after you put that quarter pitch sprocket on. All right, I feel like I'm rambling, going over the same thing. Hopefully this makes sense. If you guys have any questions about how to swap these things out, anything I can help you with, let me know, guys. That's honestly, that's why I have this channel. These are things I love to do. I want you guys to grow and excel in your chainsaw carving. I want you to have fun with it. Hopefully I can eliminate some of your frustrations. And, uh, you know, I just, I just, I want you guys to have a good time. Hopefully this will help you guys set up your MS-170 for detailing and small carving and things like that. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment, guys. When you do, be sure to hit subscribe, hit that bell, hit all, turn on those YouTube notifications when you guys do. Right now the channel is just over 16,000 subscribers. I really want to try to hit 30. 30,000 subscribers before the end of this year. So I've been pumping out videos, trying to help you guys hit that sub button for me, share this video up, leave me a comment, check out some other videos. Have an awesome day, guys.